Hey, everybody. Thanks for dropping by. We really appreciate it. I'm hanging here with my new friend, Freddie. Freddie, what's up? Hey, Dave. Good to see you. I'm uh, excited to, to get stuck into talking about reverb this evening. <laughs> well, check this out. Uh, tell me if you think this is right. I look at reverb uh, as a space that has sound in it, and that sound is reflecting off of different surfaces. Now, those surfaces can be walls, they can be bathrooms, they can be the Grand Canyon. I've actually yelled into the Grand Canyon and got echoes back, so I know that's true. And and so the process of, of taking that information, <clears throat> excuse me, the process of taking that information and, and turning it into something useful for us engineers uh, in audio, um, but those impulse responses take up a lot of space and eat up a lot of room. Well, if you can get less of those and make more from that, that's what this plugin that we're about to talk to you uh, about does. It's called resynthesis, and uh, it's nothing new, but it's executed in this particular plugin amazingly. I've been using it, and um, I, I, just, I, I feel like I got to stop using it. I feel like I'm addicted to it like a drug, you know, <laughs> how do you, how, I, I, does it, Freddie, does that come with any kind of anecdote to help me get, uh, off this, off this binge? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm delighted that you, <laughs> that, that you're addicted to it. I mean, I'm, I, I, I feel terrible that I've, that I've hampered you with this, <laughs> with this awful addiction, but, but, uh, at the same time, I mean, obviously that's, that's great for us. Um, I know you mentioned um, a few of the kind of presets within Paragon. I know you were talking, I think specifically about the like dark church preset within oh, it. Um, the first time you first time you switched that on, uh, yeah. you and your assistant were just kind of gobsmacked and just kind of yeah, yeah. And and that's obviously, I mean, that from my perspective, that uh, th that feels pretty good to to hear. Um, yeah, I'd say that definitely uh, the way that you've kind of described it there is pretty pretty you know pretty bang on the money um the one thing i would kind of say as well is yes yeah, so it's you've kind of alluded to the fact that a lot of convolution reverbs you'll have this huge library of impulse responses so that you can kind of recreate the authentic sound of any space but mm -hmm. it does take up a lot of uh, memory on your hard drive um paragon still can do all of that but with a much smaller library i think we have 20 impulse responses loaded in there but because of this resynthesis that you've talked about this technology that was developed at the university of york it essentially allows you to adjust the size of the space adjust the kind of the brightness or darkness or whatever of the space adjust the decay time and so on without using anything like time stretching without repeating any audio those kind of things which can kind of give you unwanted artifacts. They don't always necessarily sound bad, but they but they, but they can give you unwanted artifacts. Whereas this resynthesis engine within Paragon essentially creates a brand new imaginary space. So it is still the kind of um, the authentic sound of a real space, but uh, it's it's been augmented. So it's it's kind of a uh, it's maybe surreal rather than real. But it um, yeah, it's still you know it's that really authentic sound. Let's uh, let's call it enhanced. It's an enhanced sound because because the resynthesis algorithm algorithm that you guys use is just amazing. There's there's uh, there's several things I look for in a reverb. Um, pre delay is one of them, um, and then how it handles the time after pre-delay, which would be the bulk of the reverb, and then how it decays. And so we've got controls with Paragon with for all of these things. Um, it's amazing how much control we have. And the other thing I like is it, it, usually a reverb can either handle impulse responses, we call that convolution reverb, or it's algorithmic, and both of them have their uses, and both of mm -hmm. them are are both of those concepts. I use them a lot. There, there's great plugins out there that do both, but Paragon has made a a, a way to, to use them both in such a way that it, it does reduce your CPU hit, but it also gives you a lot more control over some of those three forms of, of, of what I look for. It does all three of those forms amazingly well, and um, so uh, I've had my version of it. The new version, by the way, which is uh, you, 
you got to get you got to get that. You can you can tell us what's good about it in a minute. But but let me ramble for a second. Um, okay. All of that all that to say, this plugin earned a spot in my in my arsenal of tools, and uh, that's a hard place to get to. So, <laughs> but uh, it, was, um, it was worth the battle getting there. <laughs> It really is good, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, there, there's there's times when you have expectations and you get a new plug-in, and I'm blessed and lucky. I get a few plugins um, once in a while, and 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 it's like a blind date. You're hoping she looks pretty, and you're hoping <laughs> that she has a good conversation, and you're hoping she's intelligent, and and you're hoping you'll have a good time. But it doesn't always happen. Same thing with plugins, and this plugin fulfilled all of my wildest dreams about what I wanted from a, from a reverb, uh, plugin. And, and we forget sometimes that versatility is not necessarily a good thing in a plugin because there's limitations due to the digital concept. This plugin, there's no, there's no shortcuts anywhere and there's no, there's no dead spots. It's just, it, you want to emulate a room and, and you want that room to, to give you a certain type of sound to what you're, putting into it, whether it be a guitar or, or, or a drum or um, a vocal, it's there for you. And it's easy to find. And the presets are as good as any I've ever, well, they're better. They're better than almost all of them that I've heard because I don't, because of the resynthesis. Am I right? Yeah, I'd say so. So you, you've kind of alluded to this already, but just to kind of expand on one of the points you made, um, you were kind of talking about the differences between convolution reverb and algorithmic reverb. Mm -hmm. One of the main limitations of a convolution reverb is the fact that you are limited by the way that the room sounded on that day when the impulse response was, was recorded. So for anyone who doesn't know um, what that entails, usually essentially you'll go into whatever space, you'll set up an array of microphones to record the sound of the space, and you'll either play like a sine sweep, so f either frequencies from lowest to highest or highest to lowest, I'm not sure if it matters, um, or like a gunshot, basically any sound which covers the whole frequency range of, of human hearing, and you'll record how the room reacts to all of that, and then it gets what's called deconvolved, the deconvolution process, um, in order to make that reverb sound. But you are limited by how the room sounded on that day. I kind of mentioned about the resynthesis. It allows you to augment that and enhance that far beyond how the room sounded on the day. Um, and yeah, so to, so to kind of bring it back to the presets, like you were talking about, Dave, um, even though there's only, I think, like I said, I think there's about 20 impulse responses at the moment um, in the plugin. But off the back of that, there's tons and tons of presets that are all, if I do say so myself, pretty amazing sounding. So, you know, there's only one church impulse response, but because of that resynthesis technology, I think, you know, there's maybe 10 different church presets, which all sound just as authentic as each other and are all, you know, have the same amount of realism, the same amount of character and so on. Um, and yeah, you can, you can go into Paragon without having any understanding of how any of it works. There's a lot you can do if you understand how it works, but if you have no understanding, you can go in, pick, almost pick a preset at random and it's probably going to sound pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah. I, 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 I would say. Why don't we do this? Why don't we, uh, go to the plugin itself. Let's let's talk about some of the settings and some of the some of the things that it does really well, which is everything, and and give the give give the, our audience um, a visual as best as we can version of the plugin. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, with the mic. Uh, what the mic does, I forget the full name for it, but it allows you to have front to rear, uh, which technically is uh, early reflections, mm -hmm. but it doesn't do it like early reflections. It does it like you're in a space and you really hear that sound that you put and use that particular uh, parameter and it'll actually make it sound like it's coming front to rear. And uh, so, so needless to say, that's my second favorite thing about the plugin. My first favorite thing about the plugin is no knobs I hate knobs. I hate knobs on plugins. I love knobs on outboard gear. I love knobs on outboard gear. I don't like faders on outboard gear. 
I like I like sliders, faders, whatever you want to call them, and um, I, I think you've done it as good as I've ever seen. So so what I'm talking about, guys, is is there's a slider and you grab that slider and 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 it tells you what it's doing. It tells you the amount. Tells you where where this end is and where this end is, and that's just so much easier than turning it, getting getting your mouse, doing this, or maybe sometimes you have to do this. So you don't know whether to do this with your mouse or this with your mouth. A, sl a slider is just there, and it doesn't take up any room, and it's just intuitive because you have a graphic representation of where you are with that particular element that you're trying to use. So, so kudos for that. Whoever did that, kiss them on the lips for me. Thank you. I will. That that's uh, that's uh, my colleague Ben designs the UI for all our plugins nowadays, and he, yeah, he does well, do a pretty on, amazing job. Said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll let him know. Shout out to Ben. <laughs> shout out to Ben. Shout out to Paul, too, while we're doing a shout out. <laughs> and, and Sophie, too. We can't let her go unnoticed. That's it. What's your favorite? What, what's some of your favorite components of how to use the plugin or, and ways to use the plugin? Um, so I think, yeah, like you mentioned, the, I mean, the mic distance is a, is a pretty major thing, kind of allowing you to control how far from the source the sort of quote unquote virtual you know the virtual microphone is i i find myself using that a lot um the way that i really like to use that within a mix is having maybe two or three instances of paragon where the settings are all exactly the same apart from that mic distance setting it means that you can kind of situate all the elements of the mix within the same space but still give it that sense of depth um without just ha having having certain elements you know with with a with more wet signal on the reverb or less wet signal or whatever you can have them all the exact same kind of um wetness the exact same decay time whatever else but just situated further forward or further back so you might have your vocalist really close you might have the i don't know the guitars set quite far back or what what, what whatever you want to do with it so that for me was a real game changer when we added in the mic distance when the uh when the development guys showed me that i i, I got pretty excited um yeah <laughs> look at how i use it so in in my world i i can't get a I. it's hard to get a, a situation where you've got a, the vocal sitting on top of the mix metaphorically speaking mm -hmm. and so there's there's techniques that you do to try and make it sound like the, the vocal is sitting on top of the mix. You can use MS and, and handle the middle so that when you set the vocal in the middle, blah, 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 blah. But uh, with this, you don't have to set something forward. You, you, you can set it backwards. So, for example, I love loud snares, but I don't want it to, to cover the vocal. Now, the middle of the mix is the most precious piece of real estate that we have in mixing. So. We have to be careful what we put there and how we handle it because we've got the kicks, we've got the snares, we've got the bass, we've got the vocals, we've got all these things that are in the middle and they're fighting for to be heard. And if they're not heard, an engineer has not done his job right. And so with that, with that particular um, uh, parameter, I, I can use different reverbs with different depths. I think you mentioned this yesterday as a technique to um, – to place the snare just right behind the singer, then the mm -hmm. kick, then the guitars, and um, then the the synthesizer keyboards. We t throw them in the back. We don't need them anymore. Not really. Not really. Not really. Not really. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Audio guides. Uh, you heard but, it here uh, first. Dave Pensado hates it. <laughs> well, you know what I do. I'm 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 I'm, I'm going to a non sequitur, which I'm pretty good at. Uh, in fact, it's part of my charm. Um, uh, I like I like the mix to work with just vo a lead vocal, drums, and bass, and one one instrument. It mm. be the head that plays all the way through a piano. And if I can make if I can make you like that, then imagine what I can do adding in everything else, you know. And I think that's that's a a, a good way to work. You're working from the bottom up rather than from the top down. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you there. Um, I think when we, when we spoke yesterday as well, kind of on a similar note, we were talking about the, um, the modulation within Paragon and you were kind of talking about using that just on like an occasional snare, which yeah. I thought was like a, a pretty interesting mm-hmm. approach to using that just to get that kind of, um, a bit of intrigue because it's not a very yeah. naturalistic sound, the, uh, the modulation. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to be taking the words out of your mouth, but but what you were what you were no, saying when we spoke yesterday about that was uh, was yeah really interesting. I thought um, because it's a little bit because Paragon is such a naturalistic sounding reverb. I think it is almost almost kind of at odds with the intent behind the plugin having that modulation feature in there because the modulation essentially is just like a a kind of classic chorus effect that goes on the wet signal of the reverb. Um, and it sounds, you know, it sounds completely unreal. There's nothing realistic about it, particularly. Yeah. But sometimes you do kind of want that shimmer. You want that that sort of wobble. Yeah. And it is kind. You are kind of having your cake and eating it as well, because you've got the um, yeah the kind of realism of Paragon. But then you've kind of just adding this sort of little shimmer on the top of that, or this little kind of wobbliness on top of that. But but what if you what if you automate the modulation? I mean that that's a whole a whole additional world <laughs> world of possibility. Well, my my We're down my, the rabbit hole. My thought process and 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 the way I've I've kind of thought about my career in terms of mixing, um, the human brain, which I've studied quite a bit, partly because I lost mine a few years ago and had to struggle like heck to get it back. But um, the, the so so learning a little bit about the brain is is very very useful because. After after the brain listens to maybe four bars, three bars, two bars, ten bars, everybody's different. But at some point in time, you need to wake them up. Trevor Horn, my favorite producer, was brilliant at that. If you listen to Owner of a Lonely Heart, you hear these little break-ins where different, where just things just are like way too loud, but they grab your attention. And so movement is is a useful tool to the mix engineer and to the producer. It, it and if you take a look at, and listen to some of the songs that grab your attention right away you'll you'll notice that so 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 that's why I, I I'm so strong on letting people know about that modulation uh, parameter because it's, it's done really well like you say it can be considered a, uh, and used as a chorus which is which is brilliant and then you can actually have it be like a traditional uh, modulation and and modulation is is something that tends to be the domain of synthesizer players, but all the synth things or uh, uh, t- techniques and tools are creeping into the plugins right now. Like, like, like you can, you can see it coming into, in, into taking over the plugins real soon. And yep. I, think that's, I think that's very healthy for us to have some of these things in, in, in instead of just, instead of just attack release and blah, blah, blah. We, we've got things that we can have more control. Anytime you have more control, you're going to have a better opportunity to, to grab a listener. And if you grab too many listeners, you get a, a, a Grammy. <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> but uh, uh, continuing on, on, some of the, on some of the parameters, when, when you're working, say you've just loaded it on a vocal, what, what do you look for and try to do first? So I think one thing that's really useful for a vocal, so I was actually speaking to a friend of mine quite recently a guy called lee smith who's who's a really good um mixing engineer he was working on i don't even know if i i don't, I don't know if i should it, name drop here but i'm I'm gonna anyway he was he was working on some mixes for holly humberstone i don't know how big she is in the u.s but she's pretty getting pretty huge in the uk at the moment yeah, and he was here. he was kind of talking about um getting the vocal to kind of sit in front of the speakers so you've kind of got this um you don't want it to you know you want kind of everything else is coming from the speakers but the vocal needs to be kind of uh suspended in midair and kind of ways to achieve that and um i can't remember if we were talking specifically to do with paragon st let's pretend for the sake of this conversation that we (laughs) we were i'm not 100 percent sure but um within paragon st it has this stereo width control which is 
it's not quite as powerful as our Stereoizer plugin, but it's based on one of the algorithms from the, the Stereoizer plugin. I think it's based on the, the yeah. linear width algorithm don't, we have within don't, that. Don't, don't mess with my Stereoizer plugin. That's <laughs> my guy right there. That's my go-to. That's money. That's money. Don't don't mess well, with that. Well, thank you. I'm an F-bomb right there. That's how much I don't want you to mess with my plugin. Don't worry. We won't be messing with Stereoizer. But, but um, basically, within, within Paragon, um, it has that stereo width control. Yeah. And I'd say for a vocal, playing with the stereo width, either just setting it to be quite wide or yeah. pot potentially even even automating that and you know having it become wider in the chorus, narrower in the verse, whatever you want to do, that's a really good way of achieving that kind of effect of the uh, yeah, the vocal almost being suspended in midair out, out, out the front of the speakers. So yeah, if you're talking specifically about mixing vocals, I'd say the stereo width is is a really good way of achieving that. And um, even if it's a mono vocal, because obviously the reverb itself is stereo, if you're, you know, the, 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 the way that the impulse response is interacting in the left and the right is different. So adding additional stereo width to that st is, you know, is still going to create more of an impression of width, even if the vocal recording itself is in mono. What are, what are some other new, new, um, new implementations on this new version of, uh, Paragon ST. So version 1.3, which is what is about to come out, there's only one brand new feature within that, which is this compact mode. So it's it, right. it's not the most exciting right. thing we've ever added in, but no, it's, no, 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 no. We 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 live in a laptop headphone world. I mean, of course, yeah. That's that's definitely necessary. It's yeah. So Paragon itself and Paragon ST, the UI is quite big, um, and particularly if you're working on like a MacBook or even if you're working on a big screen, but you're the type of person who has 10 plugin UIs open at once, you you really want as much kind of screen real estate um, to play with as, as possible. So we've added in this compact view, which just shrinks Paragon down um, and yet gives you a lot more flexibility. It still has all the same features. You can toggle the compact view on and off as well. So you don't have to kind of stick with one or the other, but that's that's the only um, that's the only brand new feature. But we have added a few other things in relatively recently. So I mentioned the mic distance, I mentioned the stereo width, we mentioned the modulation. We actually added in like tempo sync as well, so the pre delay can be synced up to the BPM of the project. I think the modulation can be synced to the BPM of the project as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a lot of cool things which have come with the redesign of Paragon ST because originally Paragon was for kind of audio post guys. Paragon ST is, um, is more for your, your music guys. And yeah, we've kind of added a lot of these features in with, with those guys in mind. Yeah. One of the things I'd like to point out to our listeners is, um, uh, when, when, a, when, a, guys, when a, when a plugin manufacturer takes the time and spends the money and makes the effort to give you something like like being able to size and resize your plugin that shows they care about you that shows that they're they're not gonna, they're not gonna make any money for that i hope they do but they don't and so so that concept right there tells you about this company from head to toe uh, i've met a lot of people from this company and they all are concerned about the importance of of, of making tools that the average user from the very beginning to the very top can use these plugins and, and, and all of that concept is contained within Paragon ST and by the way, every other plugin. I rarely use a manual with them. Rarely. I think that's definitely something we really try to keep in mind is, you know, if you want to do some really advanced techniques, by all means check out the manual. But we want to make it so that anything that we make is you can open it up and it should be clear. Mm -hmm what you need to do, where you need to go, how to achieve whatever sound it is you want to achieve. And this uh, producer bundle I hear about, tell me about that. Is that something I need? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I'm contractually obliged to tell you that it is, it is what you need, Dave. Um, but no, well, it's, I'm, it's not, I'm not obliged. <laughs> I, I know I need it. Uh, uh, I use everything in the bundle, so it, it would be redundant for me because I have everything. But Absolutely. Oh man. It's yeah, so we've um part of the reason well, 
what, what we've coincided with this Paragon 1.3 update is that Paragon ST has now been added into our producer bundle, which is called New Gen Producer. That's the name of the bundle. Um, it has, I think now with Paragon ST, I think it's nine plugins in there. I'm sure I'm going to get someone from the marketing team sending me an angry email after this telling me I've got that wrong. I th I'm pretty sure it's nine plugins. Um, there's plugins in there for stereo manipulation. So we talked about Stereoizer. That's our, our kind of standalone stereo width plugin. We have Stereo Placer, which is like a, a frequency specific panning tool. Mono Filter, which is bass management. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's used on if you've got a stereo signal and you just want the lower frequencies in mono, but you want to keep everything else in stereo, that's what you'd use. It has ISLST, which is our stereo limiter, SEQST, which is our stereo EQ, um, what else? Sigmod, which is our kind of modular um, single process kind of um, utility belt almost it has like 13 different um utilities in there and um, that you can reroute in different ways and it allows you to kind of augment whatever door you're using so for example it allows you to set up an effect send in the middle of a signal chain so rather than having like your effect send uh, at the start of the chain or the end, you know, you can do pre, pre, pre or post. You can actually with Sigmod set that up in the middle, so you can do all kinds of like weird routing bits and pieces, which is is a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, point being, Paragon ST has been added into that bundle. We're doing some deals on the bundle at the moment as well. Um, so I think if you already own um, Newton Producer, you can get a discount on adding Paragon ST to your arsenal. Um, so yeah, pretty exciting. But I know in particular you are a big fan of Stereoizer. Um, yes, yes, stereo placer. And so yeah, I was really surprised actually how you, when we were talking the other day, you, you were you were saying about how often you use Stereo Placer. Because for me, Stereo Placer, it, I think it's amazing. I actually, it might be my favorite plugin that we make. But for me, it's like one in thirty sessions that I do. It it it. it I find that I need it. It's just that when when you need it, you really need it. That's kind of my experience. But for you, you were saying you, you use it on almost every mix. Well, there's there's times when you want something to be to be stereo, uh, but not the entire spectrum of that sound. Sometimes you only want the the bass to be stereo on a sound. So you can mm -hmm. take um, stereo placer, and you can take and say move. Some 50 cycle over to the left and some 80 cycle over to the right. It's, it's, it's like mix engineer heaven. It just gives you stereo and then then you can determine how I'm making, I'm making hand gestures you can't see. Uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and you can narrow it and, and, and do a lot of things with it. Um, what I'm really curious about is um, Nugent has always been known for, for, for being ahead of the game. So don't don't worry about don't worry about anybody at the company. Tell us what the future holds for us. Be honest now. I know I know, um, what, you, I know what you're doing. So go ahead. <laughs> so uh, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. First thing is we have a brand new plugin called Aligner, which currently isn't available for sale. Uh, it's a automated phase correction tool so it allows you if you have multiple microphones recording the same source and you want to get the phase lined up perfectly you can use a liner for that so you know if that's works really really well on guitars so i had a recording of a guitar amp with three microphones on it which sounded cool but listening to it you were like there's a there's some horrible phasing going on here. And I, you know, used a liner on that, got it sounding perfect, really, you know, really thick. Um, you know, once once I'd got everything sort of uh, in phase. Um, and I, yeah, I think we're doing, like I say, it's not available for sale yet, but I believe we are doing a giveaway um, for some of the audience um, through through you, Dave. So, oh, yeah, excited, excited for more yeah, people. I can't wait. Because I'm yeah. gonna steal the first the first twenty of them you give me. So, <laughs> um, well, yes, yeah, so we, we need tools that that um, we've got plenty of tools that'll that'll easily give you 180 degrees out of phase. So let me tell you, let me tell you guys, my friends out there, out in uh, out in the country and in the world, um, I'm a big proponent 
in the importance of phase. Like if your mix isn't clear or you feel it's foggy or you compare it to, 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 to your favorite mix engineer and it's cloudy, look for phase issues. Now you, now you can't solve those phase issues with just zero and 180. So sometimes you have to slide the track to put it in phase, but this particular plugin can do it for you automatically. So I would look, I'd look for that because uh, I didn't know about it myself. But when 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 I finish this te- this uh, podcast, I'm going to get that. I need it. I need. It. I use it. I use it. You, I can't express to you how important phase is. It's particularly with live drums, but uh, with everything. In 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 in. Uh, uh, Sometimes we call those those problems resonances, but it's just phase issues, and and I, I think that's a, that's a needed plugin, very needed plugin. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, so oh, I'm looking. Wait on it now. Give it to my boys free if you can. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we'll we'll definitely be giving giving some of those away. So I'm excited for more people to get their hands on it. Then beyond that, we do have another brand new plugin in the pipeline. I think coming out next month i can't say a huge amount about it and it is more kind of geared towards our audio post guys rather than music production although a lot of music production guys will definitely find a use for it as well all i can all i can really say about it is that it's going to be part of our halo family of tools so we already have halo up mix we have halo down mix this is something else that's 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 as much as i can as i can really say no, about it today. we gotta have, no no we, we gotta have we gotta have surprises in life it, it can get a little boring without yeah you know, like i said you need movement in music and you need movement in life so surprises can't wait guys a carpenter is only as good as his tools and we happen to have like i said at the beginning to tie this all up in a bow we have amazing tools and at that forefront is Nugent, and so I find a use for everything they have. My, my, I have favorite plugins, and um, I, I'd love for you to check them out. I think it could en- enhance your career, move you up a notch or two, uh, and go check them out. And also study a little bit about reverb because that's what we're talking about today, the Paragon reverb. So uh, you don't need to be a, a PhD in, 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 in reverb, but but understand some of the some of the, the knobs and what they do, the sliders and what they do, and, and get to be get to know why you use reverb. The worst thing you can do is just put a reverb on because you heard that some big time engineer did it. Have a reason for reverb, and then have a reason in your mind what you want it to sound like, and then use these tools to go to them. What do you think about that, Freddie? I mean, I I, I think you're absolutely right. Words of wisdom, as always. Yeah.